Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a dashboard form to summarize sales data in your Microsoft Access databases. And we're going to learn the DSUM function. Today's question comes from Tobias in Cleveland, Ohio, one of my gold members. Tobias says, what's the best way to quickly summarize my sales for the day at a glance without having to run reports all the time? Well, Tobias, to do this, we're going to create something called a dashboard. Now, you can create a separate dashboard form if you want, or you can just throw some stuff on your main menu. That's what I do. Then throughout the day, whenever you want to see an update, you just go back to your main menu, hit refresh, and all your information updates. Let me show you how to do this. Now, we've got some prerequisite videos I want you to go watch first. If you haven't watched my invoicing video, which is based on my Tech Help Free blank template, go watch that first. I'll put links to all this stuff down below. These are all free videos. Go watch aggregate queries, because we're going to make an aggregate query to group our sales together. Then I want you to watch the DLOOKUP, DCOUNT, and DMAX videos. At least watch DLOOKUP first. We're going to use a function today called DSUM to sum up a group of records, all right, to get an order total. And it's a close relative to these other three. So watch DLOOKUP first, then go watch those other two ones. And today we're going to learn DSUM. And of course, the NZ function, very useful. It's for converting null values to zeros. Go watch that too. So go watch all these videos right now. Pause this one. Come back to it, and then we'll move forward. All right, you ready? Go. Okay, you back? All right, here we go with the new stuff. Okay, here I am in the Tech Help free template. Again, a free download from my website. In here, we've got customers, and each customer can have an order. Okay, the orders are saved in the order table, but this doesn't give you any information about the total for the order. That's stored in the order detail table, right? You get your unit price here, the quantity, so that gives you each line total. Then we have a query called order detail Q that takes the quantity times the unit price and gives you the extended price. So if you take all the extended prices for the same order ID, that gives you the order total. So to make things easier when we're doing our dashboard, we're going to make an order summary query that just sums up the order total for each order. All right, let's make that real quick. This is going to be an aggregate query. So go to create. Query design, we're going to bring in the order table and then our order detail queue because that's got the extended price in it right there. Okay. So what fields do we need in our order summary query? Well, we want the order ID. The order date is necessary. We care if it's paid. And for this query, I'm only going to show the paid orders if it's true or not. And then I need the extended price. Now, if memory serves, I don't think I marked any of these guys paid. So let's go mark these orders paid. All right. Now, let's turn this into a totals query or an aggregate query, and we're going to change extended price to sum. So these will all get grouped by, which these are all the same for every order, and then extended price gets added up. All right. Save this as my order summary queue. And if I run it now, you can see I've got one entry for each order. And there's the sum right there, sum of extended price. Let's rename that. Let's give that an alias instead of sum of extended price. Let's call this order total colon. That's how you rename a field. It's called an alias. All right. And if you want to format that as currency, there's a couple ways you could do it. You could try right-clicking here and going to properties and then changing the format here. But that doesn't always work. Let's see. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, in this case, it does. If not, you got to use the format function. Now, let's go change the dates on our orders because this template was built a few months ago, and you can see the dates in here. Let's make this. So we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing a summary on our main menu to show today's sales and the sales from the past week. Okay, so let's change these dates of these orders. Today is August third, twenty twenty one. So I'll make this one from today, August third. Let's go to the next one. Let's make this one from August 2nd. And then we'll make this one from something that shouldn't show up. Let's go set the, yeah, let's go July 1st and give it some numbers, right? Okay. So I got three orders in the system. Let's take a look at our summary query again. There we go. August 3rd, August 2nd. That's a pretty big order, though. <laughs> let's change that amount. That's kind of silly. Let's go back to the order form. 
and let's change this to two and three. How's that sound? Order summary. Okay, it's a little more reasonable. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the dsum function, and we're going to sum up the order total field from the order summary queue where the order date is today's date. Okay, and then for our weekly one, we'll say where it's today's date greater than, or the, the order date is greater than seven days ago. All right, so how do we do that? Well, we know how to use the dlookup function. Let's now do the dsum function. So I just put a section right here on my main menu. Uh, I like to put like a label across the top of it like this, right? Put in here like sales summary like that, right? And then give it a little format. Maybe make it, uh, it's green, so let's go like dark green, and then maybe uh, like a light green behind it, something like that, right? Bold it, center it, All right? Looks kind of neat. And then we'll put down here our actual value. So let's go grab a text box, text box, drop it there, make this guy white so we can actually see it, like so. All right, this one will be today, today's sales. Slide it over like this. Move you over here. And maybe we'll like right align that one. Okay. So today's sales will go right in this box. How do we do that? All right, let's open up the properties for this text box. Let's give it a name first. Go to the All tab. Let's call this one Sales Today. All right, and in the control source, we're going to put our dsum function. So I'm going to zoom in, Shift F2. Okay, equals dsum. What am I looking up? Order, total. I can't hit the double quotes today. Comma, from where, order, summary, Q. Comma, where the order date is greater than or equal to. And then we're going to put today's date inside of the little, uh, the little hashtag symbols, right? These guys. But that's going to be outside the string. Okay, a little string concatenation there. Okay, order date is greater than or equal to today's date. Now, why don't I just say order date equals today's date? Well, because sometimes people put date and time in their date fields, right? If you've got your order date field in your table, if you give it the ability to accept time values, you want to take that into consideration. If someone types in, you know, 8, 3 at 5 p.m., then this won't show that data. So I like to always take that into consideration, even if I'm making them just enter in dates. All right, I always try to think of that time factor. Now, this whole thing, I want to enclose this inside of the NZ function, just in case there are no sales for today. You don't want to see a null value or an error there. All right, so it'll just return a zero. Okay, hit OK. Let's save this, close it, and reopen the main menu. And there we go. There's our 55.5. Little formatting, maybe design view. Open up this guy, format currency, and maybe we'll uh, right align that, save it, close it, open it back up again. There you go. There's your sales from today. Is that number right? Let's see. Order summary from today 5550. Yeah. Let's change one of the other orders to today's date as well and make sure that this date uh, refreshes itself. Let's see here. So let's go to the, uh, let's go to the order table. Let's change this order here to 8.3 as well. And just to make sure that our formula is working right, let's say that this person put it here at 6 p.m. Okay. Now, if I just come back here to the main menu, it's not going to refresh. You have to hit the refresh button up here. All right. And that will refresh the form data. Or hit F5 on your keyboard. Can you make a button down here? Yeah, you can, but it involves a little bit of programming. It involves one line of VBA code. There is a button on the wizard, but it doesn't work. It only works for forms that have data behind them that are bound to a table. For an unbound form like this, the command button wizard doesn't work. I don't really like the command button wizard that much. That's why I like to try to teach you guys a little bit of VBA. Tiny bit of VBA, a little bit of, you know, a couple lines of code here and there can really make your databases po powerful. Okay, let's go put that other order back so it doesn't show up anymore. So let's go put this back to 672. Okay, close that. Let's refresh it again, F5. Okay, now let's do the past week. So back to design view. I'm just going to copy and paste this text box. Copy, paste, Control-C, Control-V. Slide that up there. All right. 
past week. And what did I call this one? Sales today? Let's call this one sales. We'll just call it sales week. And let's edit the control source. Okay. It's going to be the same thing. Look up the order total from the order summary queue where the order date is greater than or equal to date minus seven. That's a week ago. See how easy that is? And this is a little string concatenation here, folks, by the way, if you don't know what this is. This is how you take two strings and put them together. And you want the actual date value outside of the string. So Access has to evaluate this and then puts the actual date in here. You don't want to send this to the function. Sometimes you can, but it's a good idea not to be in that habit. All right, hit OK. Save this, close it, open it up again, and there you go. There's your big order, including today. All right, the past week's sales are going to also include today's sales. Now, for the extended cut for the members, I'm going to also show you the past month and the past year. It's slightly different. We'll use the date add functions. But hold on, we're not done. We're not done with the free video yet. Let's put a little chart over here. Let's do a little bar chart showing our monthly sales. So you can see like the trend of the bars and stuff. You're right, little, nice little quick little bar chart over here. So let's go back to design view. Now in recent versions, I think 2016, Microsoft added a new chart type called the modern chart. In fact, it's so new I haven't even covered this fully in my regular classes yet. I cover the old chart object right here in Access uh, 31, Access Expert 31. There's a lot of different chart types in here than the old one. Bar charts, pie charts, a lot of kind of stuff. And it's pretty robust. The modern charts are pretty new, and they're cool, and they look a lot better, but there's still some quirks in them. So I, I haven't taken the time to cover these fully yet. But let me go through and show you how to do a real simple column chart. All right, let's come over here, draw a little chart. All right, now this stuff just just hides it immediately. But let's come over here. I'm going to slide this over. Just drop a little chart right there anywhere on your form. And we'll do like this, okay? All right, now, first thing you want to work on is the chart settings. So what's your data source? Well, let's go and find our order summary query that we just made. All right, it gives you a little preview here. That's not what you want. All right, the the axis, the category, is going to be the order date. And you can pick what you want to see over here. You want to see months, years, quarters, right, days. Let's do, uh, let's do monthly sales. Okay, show monthly sales. Legend leave as blank as none. And then the values is going to be the order total. All right, so there's the order total, and there are the months. All right, you can see right there what it's going to look like. Go over to Format. All right, give it a display name if you want to. All right, Monthly Sales. Okay. If you want to change the color, you can change the color right here. All right, the bar color. I kind of like that, the blue outline with the purple in there. All right, you want to see a data label that will show you the exact amount of sales. Okay, trend line if you want to see a trend line. All right, sales are going up. All right, close the chart settings. And then let's open up the property sheet. A couple things I want to show you on here that are neat. But first, a real quick advertisement. I know a lot of you bail as soon as the lesson's over. But if you really want to learn about charting and stuff like that, Access Expert 31. I cover all kinds of stuff, different kinds of charts. These are the classic charts, but these ones work really, really well. They've been in Access for years and Excel, pie charts, and all kinds of different things. All right, Access Expert 31. If you want to learn about charting, multiple data series charts, 3D charts, forecasting, we do a lot, a lot more with chart dashboards and so on. Okay, okay, back to the lesson. Okay, we're going to give our chart a name. Let's call this like... Uh, sales chart or whatever. Always give your objects names if you can. Come over to the format tab here. I like to turn off for just, you only got one data series in here. I'm going to turn off the legend. See where it says has legend? Turn that off. That thing up top there? You don't need that. Alright, goodbye. Chart title. Alright, monthly sales. I mean, it, it's kind of self-explanatory, but it looks nice. If you want to use chart titles, you can put them down here. Right, category access title, primary access title, secondary access title. So like here you can put month, right? It shows up on the bottom down there. All right, you can put sales in here for the secondary access. This guy shows up vertically like that. That's kind of neat, right? Or if you don't want them, turn it off. You get more space. See, again, self-explanatory. And there's all kinds of other, I mean, you could, you could set the width, the height, the colors, 
the padding around it, all kinds of stuff in here. All right, all these are in the property sheet. So this, let's save this, close it. Let's open it back up again. And, okay, we'll have to make this bigger. Don't forget to put that. Let's see here. Make you about there. Save it. Close it. Open it up one more time. There we go. All right. Now, if you had more data in here, let's say let's put another order in. Let's put an order in from June 15th. All right, something for, I don't know, this person. Blah, 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 blah for $600. Okay, and it's paid. Close it. Come back over here. Refresh F5. And look at that. It chart updates. Okay, and yeah, it might go negative here if you got the trend line because it's, it's, it's forecasting backwards this way. So... Me personally, I almost never use trend lines because trend lines are meaningless. It's one month could be <laughs> any different from the previous one or the next one. But this is basically now the start of a dashboard, and you can quickly and easily see what today's sales were, your past week, and what your monthly sales have been. Yeah, I think I'm going to turn off. Let's go in here. I'm going to turn off that trend line, and I am going to put the data labels on. Yeah, and let's see what that looks like. I like that better. I think that looks nice. Want to learn more in the extended cut for the members? I'm going to show you how to add the past month and the past year to your sales figures. We'll add a refresh button. I'll make a button that works instead of the one on the command button wizards that doesn't work. And then I'll show you how to switch the charts. We'll go from monthly sales to annual sales. See that? Two different charts there. That's all covered in the extended cut for the members. 15 minutes long. It's a pretty good video. Silver members that up get access to all of my extended cut videos. Not just this one. All of them. There's, what, almost 200 now. There's lots of them. Lots of stuff to watch. And, of course, gold members can download my database templates from these videos. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select All to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.